Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, we are going to be making these scrubbies. However, we are going to be making them on 24 peg knitting looms. Now I know it's, this is a crochet channel, but I want you guys to expand your, your talents from not just crocheting, but to loom knitting. And it, it's super easy. And you can get these little looms at Walmart. I am going to have a description or a link in the description box for you guys to get a, it'll be this one. You guys can get one from Amazon. Um, yeah, th it, these are so easy to work with. Plus, in my opinion, I think knitting these little scrubbies are prettier than the ones th that you crochet. And that's just my opinion. I mean, I think these are so cool. Okay, so first thing I want to say, I want to do is apologize for the sounds you're going to hear in the background of this tutorial. It's storming and raining and birds are chirping. <laughs> but um, to get started, let's talk about what you're going to need, okay? So these scrubbies, well, let me ask you this. How many of you guys have this yarn in your cotton uh, well, it's in my cotton. In your yarn, in your yarn pile, or your yarn, uh, what is the word I'm trying to say for Pete's sake? Your yarn stock, and you never use it, right? Like I have this, I have several of these, and I never used it, never used it. And recently, I cleaned out my all my yarn, and I'm like, I've got to figure out something with this. And I found something online and I'm like, this is genius. <laughs> Whoever came up with this is a genius. And that's why I did the tutorial for the scrubbies. So you're going to need a skein of Red Heart Scrubby or whatever scrubby yarn. And then a cotton. So I like to do mine to where they uh, match, like the colors match. So like the purple and then the variegated. <clears throat> Or you can do both the same color. Like this is a green cotton with a green scrubby. And then here's a purple with a purple scrubby. Scrubby yarn. Anyway, so you're going to need one of those. Or you can do, for this one, I did two strands of cotton yarn. It is a tad bit smaller. Not, um, not the width, but I'm, the thickness is just a tad bit smaller. Okay. So you can do that, or you can do a, well, what did I do with it? Here we go. A strand of scrubby sparkle and a strand of cotton. So, and like these, I've got variegated with the matching sparkle because I've got a bunch of this that I've, I hate crocheting with. It is not fun, but they make some pretty scrubbies and they scrubbies work too. We use them all the time. Okay, so this is scrubby sparkle and cotton. This is just two strands of cotton. And then these are the Red Heart Scrubby and a matching cotton. Okay, so you're gonna need your yarn, but then you're also gonna need a 24 peg loom. So like I said, they have these, man, those things are got yarn on, or hair on them. They have these at Walmart. They have them at any kind of craft store. So just all you need to do is get a 24 peg loom and then a little pick. What is this called? A hook or a pick? I don't know. I call them both. And so having asked that, I do want to say that I am by no means an expert at loom knitting. I am no be means an expert at the, uh, um, the terms for, <laughs> for loom knitting, I just kind of, you know, went with what I know and explained it the best I can. <laughs> All right. So I do want to mention there is a type of loom. I don't know what brand it is, but the peg, um, I actually, I think I have one just a second. Okay. So if you have a loom that has pegs like this, I will say these are a little more, um, for, uh, for me anyway, a little more frustrating to work with only because with this, you know, my work goes right off, right? Right off like that. Whereas with this, it's going to catch in this little lip right here. 
So I would suggest getting a loom that's more like this. The pegs are more like this instead of this shape right here. Okay. All right. Let me think. Is that it? Pretty sure that is it. So you guys can go crazy with your different color combinations and yarn combinations and all kinds of stuff. Okay. All right. Get your supplies. Oh, something else you will need is a piece of paper to make your little tally marks for your rounds and a pen. <laughs> Important. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it. Get your supplies together and let's get started. Okay, to get started with our scrubby, get adjusted in my chair here, we're going to get a slip knot. I almost said it on our hook. <laughs> we're going to get a slip knot, but we want a, a decent amount of um, tail first. So I'd say, what is that, a good, I don't know, seven inches? Is that it? It doesn't have to be seven, I'm just kind of guessing. Nope, I was way off. That's like nine inches. <laughs> just get you a good amount of tail. And we're going to get a slip knot. And now, on our 24-peg uh, loom, we're going to put it on our anchor peg. So I'm going to put this on my anchor peg and pull it tight to tighten that down. Just like that. And now I'm going to turn that and I'm going to bring that into the inside of my loom. Just like that. So it's out of the way, okay? Actually, I'm gonna bring it over here. Just like that. So, okay, so if you have, you know what, I think I have one, just a second. Okay, so what I wanted to show you, let me just take this off. All right, what I wanted to show you is, on some pegs, your anchor peg is right between two pegs, like this one. And then on some, uh, I say pegs on some looms, your anchor peg is right in front of a peg. See the difference? And either of one of them doesn't matter. Um, they're perfectly fine. Just, just one that has an anchor peg. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to get the slip knot again, and I'm going to put that slip knot on my anchor peg and pull that tight. And then, what I, well, I completely didn't even say what I was wanting to say, for Pete's sake. On either one of these, the peg to the right, which this is my right, the way these are setting, um, with the anchor pegs facing me, the peg to the right of your anchor peg is your first peg, is number one, okay? So this one is not the one that's right in front of it, the one to the right, okay? All right, now we can start. So once you get your, your slip knot on your anchor peg, run that tail to the inside between the first and your last peg, okay? So just like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our working yarn, the cotton and that scrubby, And we are going to go behind peg one, in front of peg two, behind, in front, behind, in front. Just weaving it back and forth all the way around. And what we're doing is called a drawstring cast on. You get me some slack here. Okay, back and forth, back and forth. So what should be happening is every other peg should have yarn on it and the other one not. Yarn not, yarn not. All the way around like that, okay? And then when we get back to the beginning, we're going to go in front of our last peg and behind our first peg, okay? And then we're going to stop. So now it's truly... No yarn, yarn, no yarn, yarn, no yarn, yarn, no yarn, yarn, all the way around. And now all I'm going to do is just, I'm going to bring it to my anchor peg just to hold it, just to hold it like that so I don't lose anything that I've already put on the loom. And I'm going to bring them down. 
Just push them down a little bit, just like that. Okay, and now we are going to finish the drawstring cast on. So what we're going to do is come around just like this. And I, I'm so some people go all the way around and hold it, uh, you know, back at your anchor peg. But when you do that, your work gets incredibly tight, and you cannot, you know, so far into it, you're not going to be able to. Um, bring your bottom over your top because of how tight it will get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around so far and I'm going to stop and come into the inside like this and just hold it. That's all I'm doing is just holding my work. Okay. And now we're going to get our hook and we're going to bring the top cotton and scrub all scrubby, scrubby yarn I about said scrubology, scrubby yarn over the top, just like that. The next one, we don't do that because we don't have a bottom one on there, right? So we skip to the next one, pick up the cotton and the scrubby, bring it over the top. And you can tell when you're doing this, you can feel how tight that is. So if you just kind of let, you know, let some slack go, you'll be able to move it. So we skip the next one because we don't have the bottom and we come to the next, grab the bottom, bring it over the top. Okay, so we skip this one, come to this one. Bring the bottom over the top. Did you see it shift? Let me do that again. So I'm going to hold it like I was. I'm going to pick up these bottom. Now watch. Watch right here. Watch all this work shift when I let these fingers kind of let them loose and let that yarn move through my fingers. Watch how, how you can see it move. See it? And bring it over the top. So now I'm going to bring my work back to the front and I'm going to continue around just like this. I'm going to go so far and I'm just going to stop, bring it to the inside and I'm going to hold it. Bring the bottom over the top. Bottom over the top. Bottom over the top. Bring the bottom over the top. Bring this back to the outside. And I'm coming to my anchor peg. So I am just going to make sure this is to the bottom. Bring this around all the way back to the beginning. And I'm just going to wrap around my anchor peg. Just to hold that in place for me. Okay. So I'm going to come back. Bring my bottom over the top. Got to have to separate it a little bit. Skip your next. Bring the bottom over my top. Like right here, I got to separate a little bit. Bring my bottom over my top. I'm going to undo my yarn and I've got my last peg to work. Right there, because we skip the next, and here's the last one. Because remember, the first one is the one to the right of our anchor peg. So I'm going to bring that in and bring the bottom over the top. And there is our drawstring cast on. So I'm going to bring my working yarn to the front just because I'm going to have it set there. And I'm going to bring all this down, just push it down. And it should move on there quite easily. See how it's it's not much of a resistance. It's a little bit of a resistance, but not much. Um, try not to have it much tighter than that, okay? If it's too tight and you just cannot work it, start over again, okay? All right. So that's our drawstring cast on. Now we're gonna work. We're gonna move on to the main portion of the scrubbies, okay? So this, what we're gonna do now, is called an e wrap. And this is called an e-wrap. I'm like, like I said at the beginning, I am not an expert at loom knitting. Okay. So, okay. So what, um, what we're going to do is called the e-wrap and here's why I think it's called the e-wrap. All right. So we're back to the beginning, right? Here's our working yarn coming between the last and the first, first peg being the first one to the right of our anchor peg. So this is why I think this is called an e-wrap. What we're going to do is we're going to bring our work back to the inside and then we're going to come around from the back, go around it like this and come back. Now, if you look, 
what we just did was made a cursive E. I get on camera is a cursive E. Right? So we're to the inside. We're going to come around it. Back to the inside. So to move on to the next peg, we go past that peg, come around, and back to the inside. Go past your peg, come around, back to the inside. So it just, it just looks like a bunch of cursive E's, right? So I believe that's why it's called an E-wrap. If it's not, I've, I'm sure there's an expert out there somewhere that could tell me. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to continue that all the way around. So we're going to come... So, you know, you just finished this one. We're going to go past the next one. Just go past it a little bit. Then come back and wrap it. So go past it a little bit. Come back, wrap it. Past a little, come back, wrap it. I'm not going to go all the way around. I'm actually going to stop here. And then I'm going to bring my work around to the bottom so I can hold it. Okay. And let me tell you the reason why I'm not doing that all the way around. Let's say, let's say I e-wrap that all the way around. Okay. Um, and you know, I worked, I work a couple pegs and then I lost, I let go and my yard, you know, accidentally, uh, popped off. All those e-wraps that you just did are going to go flying off. I don't know if it'll do it right now. No, it won't do it. But, um, so I just do a little work it and then e-wrap, then work it, then e-wrap, then work it back to the beginning, okay? So I'm gonna hold my work right like this so I don't lose any of these stitches. And now we're gonna come back to peg one. Now peg one, you notice, only has one one uh, round on it, and that's perfectly, that's, that's exactly what we want, okay? So we're gonna come all over to the next one and just bring the bottom over the top. Bottom over the top bottom over the top. And as you're doing that, try to push it down. If you don't, it's not a big deal. It's just a good habit to get into. Okay, I'm still holding my working yarn and I'm just bringing the bottom over the top. Bottom over the top. It's my last one right here. Bottom over the top. And now I'm back to where I need to e-wrap. So I'm going to continue e-wrapping. Making sure that you're getting both of your strands. All right, so I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to hold, come back, bring the bottom over the top. I'm just going to push that down. Bottom over the top. Work this last one right here. Bottom over the top. And now e-wrap again. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop there, come back, bring the bottom over the top, making sure to get the cotton yarn and the scrubby. Push that down, come back, bring, start e-wrapping, and I'm to my anchor peg, so I'm going to catch that last. My, this is number one, here's number 24. I'm going to e-wrap that one and then I'm just going to hold that and finish e-wrapping this round. And that is round one. So I'm going to take my little post-it and I'm going to make a tally for row or round one. All right, so now we're going to move on to round two. So now we are just going to repeat the exact same thing we just did. And now this round, we actually do catch the first the first uh, peg right there. So now um, we just keep e-wrapping. So e-wrap there and there. Work so far ahead. I'm gonna stop, hold my working yarn and bring the bottom over the top and just repeat. Bring that down. E-wrap. Oh, 
I just lost that. <laughs> Try that again. Come around and around. Alright, I'm just going to stop there and hold. Bring the bottom over the top. Bring that down. Alright, bring, just keep e wrapping. My yarn tangled up there. Alright, I'm going to stop, come back. down continue e-wrapping since my anchor peg is right there I'm just going to go all the way to the end I'm going to bring it back and hold my work so I don't lose any of anything that I just e-wrapped and then come back go I'll push this down and I'm to my anchor pegs so that's round two and that's what we're gonna repeat for 14 rounds so we already have two um, but before we move on to round three what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this slip stitch off my anchor peg and then pull that to the inside of our work just like that and take that slip knot out, out of there too all right, so we're going to just repeat what we did. E-wrap so far, hold your work, bring the bottom over the top. E-wrap, hold your working yarn, bring the bottom over the top. And repeat that until you get to the beginning. When you get past, when you go past your anchor peg, stop and make a tally mark for your round. So we just finished round two. So off camera, I'm going to do three to 14. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I just finished my 14th round. This is what my work's looking like. So what we're going to do now is a drawstring cast off. So what we're going to do is bring that working yarn to the front and we're going to wrap it all around our work, come back to the beginning, our anchor peg, and then go past it a little bit. All right to there. So here's my anchor and there's where I went past. And then cut. Now what we're going to do is take our working yarn and we're going to get a needle. Which of course, oh, here it is. So I've got my needle here and we are going to put our yarn on that needle. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to peg one and pick up our work and run that tail through the loop that's on that peg and go on to the second peg. Run our work through there just like that. Go to the next and the next and the next and we're just going to repeat this all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to get this done off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm coming around. Here is my last peg and I'm going to catch that. Bring it through there. I'm going to go ahead and go through that first one again. Just like that. I'm going to pull my needle off. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to go around and pick all of these off of our loom. This one's a little tight. All 
at some point it's probably going to get to where you don't actually need the hook to get these or the pick whatever this thing is called <laughs> to get these off of your pegs all right and there is our little scrubby so what we're going to do now I'm gonna give this a little bit of a tug and I'm going to take one end doesn't matter which one and we're going to pull that closed okay now I'm going to get this tail back on my needle and I'm going to I'm not going to precisely go through all of these stitches right here where we closed it up, but I'm going to go through a couple. A cat is playing with something on the floor. Just a second. Okay. And I'm going to pull that through. Just to help secure that center. And now I'm going to go right through it. Right through the center. And come out the other side. Just like that. Okay? Now I'm just going to set this to the side. And now I'm going to take this end and pull it. And it's going to draw a string it closed. Just like that. And now I'm going to take this end and this end and line them up. Just like that. And then pull out a little bit to get these stitches to lay flat. Just like that. And now I'm going to do the same thing using the tail that's already on my needle here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to go, hold the wrong thing. I am not going to go precisely through all of the legs of the stitches. I'm just going to go through some. It doesn't have to get every single one, but I want to try to get as many as I can. And I'm making sure that the two the two little spots where we uh, draw, drew string at close, draw string at close, <laughs> past tense of draw string. Um, make sure they're still on top of each other. Go ahead and pull that through here. Go again. All I'm doing is trying to make sure I get a pretty cl uh, nice closed bottom. Go through here again. Pull. And that should close that up. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna take the tail that's still on our needle and I'm gonna run it inside my work and I'm going to come out along a side right here. Okay? Just like that. Make sure my ends are still tied. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stitch marker and I'm going to mark where we started. All I'm going to do is just run in there. I don't care what it's through. I just want to know this is where it starts. And what we're going to do is run a little seam around this edge and that's going to keep it nice and flat and pretty. Okay, so I started here. Okay, that's where I came out. So what I'm going to do is go in and come out between. So what I'm doing, I don't want to work into these rows of stitches, right? Because what's that, what that's going to do is you're going to see the seam all the way around. But if we work in between these row of stitches right here, you can't see it. So I came out there. Now I'm going to come down and come out between these rows. Do the same thing. So I'm not going back right back in where I came out because I want to catch these bars in the middle and come out in between the stitches on the other side. Come in out. 
So I'm just going to go down one. I come down a little bit so I'm missing that stitch. In. And th th this isn't necessary. You don't have to do this. I just do it because I like to clean it up a little bit. So, so I came out right there. So I'm going to just go down a little and then come out on the other side. See how you can't see that seam? And now instead of going down, I'm just going to come up. Come out. I missed that. Come out the other side. Come down. Come out the other side. Don't go through your rows of stitches. So if I, you know, see like right here, if I went right back in there, all that's going to do is just undo what I just did. So I'm going to come down and catch this little bar right there. Come back on this side. Just about, yeah, I'm going to call it good on this tail. So what I'm going to do now is pick up this tail, which is longer. Get that on my needle. And I'm going to go in and come out right where this tail is at. I'm going to try to come out the exact same spot. Right there. Alright, so I'm going to get that. Make sure nothing's bunched up. And I'm just going to go ahead and knot this together. Run that through there. I'm going to pull it a little tight so it goes inside my scrubby. Pull that. Do it again so that knot goes inside the scrubby. Pull it nice and tight. And I am going to cut... Not the one my needle's on, not the one we're working with. The one we just finished. And let that go back inside. Okay. All right, so go through. Oh, but make sure I go somewhere else. So I'm gonna go around this bar right here. I'm gonna go around, come out on this side. Come in, but go around that bar. Don't go through your stitches on the other side and come right like that. I feel like I need to do a better job of explaining. All right, so let me stop for a minute, slow down. So if you hold your work and you can see the rows of stitches right here, that's what we do not want to go into. But if you separate those, see those bars right there? Right there is where we want to go. We want to wrap our work around. So. Okay, so I just came out here, and you can see where I came out right there, how where I'm where I am at up at the top of that bar. I don't want to go back through there because that's just gonna undo the stitch I just made. So what I do is come down and go around that next bar, and I don't go straight through. I go through and then come out the next the next um, row of stitches. Just like that. So on this side, because I'm going this way, so don't get confused that I'm going to hold it like this instead. So I came out right here, but I, I'm going to come over this bar and come to the next. God darn it. Where am I at? Here. Go through here. And now I'm going to come down to the next, over the next bar and come out this side. And what that's doing, what that is doing is just securing around this edge so it's a nice pretty flat scrubby. Where am I at? All right, so I'm going to go around the bar, come back out this side. And I'm going to go down. No, I'm going to go I'm going to go around this bar. Come to this side. Come to the side and go down to the next bar. All right, so I am going to finish this off camera 
or I'm just going to go faster. Hold on. I can get this done. Just about there. Down. Don't, don't go through the stitch. Go through there to the next. here and back to the beginning right there and all I'm gonna do see the little bar I just went underneath right there I'm gonna go back around it don't pull it all the way just pull it somewhat and I'm gonna run my needle back through both strands make sure you have the scrubby and the cotton I'm gonna pull that tight to knot it to knot that off I mean pull it tight and then I'm gonna run this back inside give it a little bit of a tug and then pull it a little cut and then your end will pop back inside take my stitch marker off and there's your scrubby how pretty is that this one's really nice I like this one and that's it guys that is all we need to do for our scrubbies. But like I said, if you don't want to run a seam around the edge, or maybe I didn't do a good enough job explaining it, I completely understand. I just do it because it, it helps it stay flat. I like that. Okay, guys, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed. Um, and like I said at the beginning, I'm sure there are, you know, other, other loom knitting tutorials that probably do a better job of explaining what to do that but this is just how I did mine um and I love these things I think these are so much prettier than the crocheted ones okay <laughs> all right guys that's it for me subscribe if you haven't comment um so you, or subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next for me and I have a really awesome pattern with this loom that I'm so so super excited to show you guys anyway so uh subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss that comment let me know what you guys think in the description box there's facebook there's instagram there's twitter whatever social media platform you guys use follow me on those or join my facebook group and show me pictures of your little scrubbies that you made um and that's it that's it guys i'll see you in the next one bye